Okay, this video is jam-packed with awesome information. We're gonna show you our shoulder workout, talk a little bit about our lean bulk approach, and show you three random ab exercises you probably haven't tried. Let's get into it. But I think you should come and take a ride. See the world through my eyes. Every day is a surprise. So I party like my birthday. LA is my birthplace. First place, west side, loud as I wanna be. Set. We just filmed it for Snapchat as well. Yeah. Finishing off with rear delts. Done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen snaps. Not bad. What are we doing right now aside from working out? Uh, a lot of messing around. Oh my goodness, it's Superman! <laughs> what was that, dude? Looking huge, though. And we're also Snapchatting on EHP taking over. When do we take over? When do we take over? Every Friday. Yeah, if you guys... Uh... If you guys were watching, you would have already seen this montage that we just did. The, wool, the full workout was there. Fortunately, it's probably gone forever, but we'll link it down below because we're nice people. Oh, buddy, this is dreamy. It's probably because I'm so good looking. Oh, sorry, I thought I was doing modeling again. <laughs> All right, seriously. Okay, guys, the lean ball, episode number two. This one is something we wanted to build up and make it super intense and super good. But the truth is, lean bulking is like the easiest thing ever and it's just really a philosophy. A bulk's a bulk. A glory bulk is the same as a lean bulk. It's just the difference of how much you're having. A bulk, you're in a surplus. It's simple. Instead of complicating and making a really boring scripted video, we're just gonna have a discussion through it and I think that way I'll be able to explain it. So the goal of a lean bulk, and the reason a lot of people do it, is you think you'll be able to put on a lot of muscle, putting on minimal fat gain. Now unfortunately there is a bit of a correlation between fat gain and muscle gain. When you put on a lot of weight, you're gonna gain more muscle more quickly, but at the same time, you're also gonna gain a lot more fat. That's why it's really hard, you gotta find the middle line. The lean bulk is really great if you wanna hold the physique, like I wanna look good, I wanna feel athletic, so I'm doing it in this really slow controlled manner. I'm doing it super slow right now, I'm about 0.5 pounds a week, and I've been very strict towards that. And bulks usually will range around from that 0.5, so that's a very low end, to three pounds gained a week, which would be crazy high end bulk. Anything over that, and you're just gaining a ton of fat, frankly. So within the lean bulk, the easiest thing to do is kind of figure out your maintenance macro. So where you're at, we're gonna hold that weight and not kind of delineate too much from it. So for instance, my maintenance is about 3,400 right now. So I'm bumping my calories up to 3,500. That's an increase of 700 calories, which isn't that much, but I've also tapered my training volume, my steps and everything else, so it's leading to about half a pound gained. So you can manipulate all those other factors. The issue with the lean bulk is as simple as it is, it's very hard to do if you're not experienced with macro and training management, and that's why online coaching is so good, because someone else has to sweat about these details and you can just eat your food. So conceptually, the lean bulk is the easiest thing in the world, like I said, if you're only in a surplus of 700, but you're also in like 
you have less activity, less output, it'll kind of counteract itself and that's how I'm getting my half a pound. But now you have to pay attention to this. If every other day I'm eating above my maintenance, even ever so slightly, like one day I go, I'm bulking, screw it, I'm gonna have an apple fritter. I have 350 to 400 calories. Now I'm at a surplus of 1100. You do that a couple days and some people would really mess up and then when they go, oh, I've already gone over, I'm bulking, it's okay. I'm gonna have five extra slices of pizza. Then slowly you'll notice week after week, you'll start getting two pounds some week, one week this week, and that lean bulk is tossed in the trash. <laughs> Pikachu! I choose you! Good. Okay, so there are a lot of common mistakes I've seen in the past when people approach a lean bulk. Number one is people just simply don't train hard enough. I see a lot of people in the gym um, who will, you know, do a set of 10 reps. Meanwhile, they have like seven or eight reps left. You should really be utilizing these extra calories to put on more muscle, to put on more size, to put on more strength, if that's your goal. But with that being said, um, a lot of people have a negative mindset towards bulking. A lot of people are actually scared to put on weight. Putting on weight isn't a bad thing, um, especially in the sense that we're gonna be doing it. It's gonna be a nice lean approach, lean bulk approach, and we're gonna really take you through that entire process, talk to you about um, increasing volume, talk to you about uh, increasing calories, and just keep you updated to what we're doing. And that brings me also to my next point where a lot of people actually have um, the wrong mis conception with lean bulking because there's a lot of steroid users out there who are kind of saying they're lean bulking year round. Meanwhile, they have a crappy training routine, crappy diet, and then they'll just kind of be giving you guys, once again, crappy advice. Um, so that's what we're here for. We're gonna keep this real. And uh, actually right now we're gonna go into the gym and show you three of our top random ab exercises that you probably haven't tried because we like to hit abs in a bulk. They're super important. Let's get it. What's up Team Colossus? You guys have been loving the ab video. So we're gonna show you three ab exercises that are amazing that you probably never heard of and never tried. So number one, not everyone has access to a decline bench, but what a lot of gyms do have is a lat pull down. So all you wanna do, lift your legs over top here, brace them however you may, embrace them against the weights, lean back, and you get amazing depth. CNS will freak out. If you wanna make it especially challenge, you can do oblique work. Just like that. Okay, this one, you guys may have seen a few people do it, but I know a lot of people actually don't or can't do it. Um, they're pretty intense, they're called windshield wipers. And this is like a ton of stability, a ton of like absolute core, like your obliques will be feeling like crazy. A lot of balance and like, I'll show you guys how to do them. Ten of those and you guys will be feeling like crazy. I recommend going for 20 if you can, but try them out, they'll burn. So back in MMA, I used to do a lot of jiu-jitsu and they would have us do this after we do bag work too. I did a little bit of boxing. So basically you just put your legs up and they just want you to come, double tap it, give it two elbows. You don't have to smash the bag. You're taking your legs out of the equation. That's just raw power, lifting yourself up through your stomach. You're getting rotary movements. So you're gonna work those obliques at the end by tapping that bag. Now I want to switch it up so my left elbow is going to be um, the starter and then go to my right one. Try to work on power and speed when doing this and then like Kyle says, switch up those elbows and you will feel it. <laughs> Hopefully you guys like the top three ab exercises you probably never heard or have to add to your routine. Get on it, let us know what you guys think, which is your favorite one and make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already guys, peace. Summer. Baby, we can get hot. Maybe it's a long shot.